Hello, welcome back. Now I'm going to do the top 10 worst Pokemon. In my previous vid videos, I did the top uh, 20, so 20 to 11. If you want to check them out, I'd appreciate it. Uh, in the me Well, now we finally get to the good stuff, the ones that are absolutely crap. The ones that you just wouldn't want to pick, ever. Um, let's start with number 10, which is Garboder. There's obvious reason why it's number 10. It's stronger than the others I mentioned beforehand, but I think its design is atrocious. Just a damn, downright, outright atrocious. I mean, it has the worst color set you could imagine. It's dark seaweed green. It's a sickening purple. It has like little hundreds of thousands like after being digested by a dog i don't know what that means um it's a ugly shape it's like fat with long arms and sort of stubby feet and what appears to be sort of like poodle ponytail things i just don't like the design it's an awful design i bet a lot of you can agree with me on that one if you don't then you obviously have problem with your eyesight you can't see very well you might, you might you might need contact lenses or something because if you think that this looks good shame on you shame on you really i know it's not important but it's just we expected a better design from nintendo game freak they've been around for years creating beautiful pokemon like pikachu rapidash sea king militic uh swanna and that was the same generation too swanna was a graceful pokemon and then Straight after it is like Garboder. Trubbish is right because it's a bag, but it's Garboder looks like a trash heap, and that's why it deserves to be number ten. Surprisingly, because I thought it'd be closer on my list, but apparently not. It's only halfway. Okay, next one. Number nine is an infamous Pokemon, one from the third gen. Again, I mean there have been a lot of crap third gen Pokemon. And this is definitely another one of them. It's Love Disc. Pink disc shaped like a heart. Do I really need to say any more? For a male gamer like me, it just reeks of girdiness and femininity. That it would, it would, it's just, re it's bloke repellent really. I mean, oh Love Disc, oh Get Away is Love Disc. You know, uh, uh, Get Away. I don't want this. I don't want this Pokemon. It's it's girly. Ugh, it's pink. It, it kisses things. Ugh. You know, ugh, I'm getting goosebumps already. <laughs> I'm actually getting goosebumps. That's thinking about owning this love disc. Or is it Louvre disc? Who who cares? Uh, for girls, it's all right. I mean, if you're like sort of young, if you're a young girl, this is per this is not bad. But because. A, many of the gamers are blo boys or men, whatever then that's the reason why it's on this list for me You, you, everyone else might disagree but I think many people don't I mean it's just a very simplistic, very average, statted thing and I think it deserves to be on this list at 9 I thought it'd be closer yet again than ninth place but I guess not that surprised me but this didn't surprise me at being at um, a number eight this next one number eight is actually a famous Pokemon it's charming it's funny it's it's it, it was good it's pop it was popular in anime that's for sure even though I, I've only watched a, like, only like a couple of episodes in my childhood uh, but yeah number eight is far-fetched I mean, like saying it has a weapon. Well, it's, it has a leaf for a weapon or spring onion. That's the equivalent of going a tub of lard is good for you. Yeah, leek's not a weapon or well, spring onion. Whatever it is, it just looks like one of them. Farfetched is on there mainly for its stats. They're appalling. All of them are about average fifty. That means it can't yet yeah, again dominate in any field. It's a flying type, nothing else. It's brown, which is bleh. And it's a first gen Pokemon, so I can kind of accept the fact that 
it's a design rather than a usable Pokemon, and its main gimmick was that it was very rare to obtain in the original Pokemon games, red, blue, and green, because the only way you could get one of them was to trade, and there was no Pokemon breeding in that generation, so it was like a trophy that you're never going to use, you know? I mean, an actual trophy, you'll never use it in battle because it's appalling unless, you know, you want to be different from everyone else who uses legendaries only and ubers only so that's why i like firefetch but its stats are just so bad that it just has to be at number eight seven on the other hand has bad stats and a lot more things worse with it it has more than one bad thing god number seven i've got to get straight to the point because i'll be here all day night rather because it's night time it's night time daddy bird is number seven a lot of you know why it has one move present which is a very risky move it's like a flip of a coin heads you win and inflict damage on your opponent tails it, it, it heals them it a move that actually heals your opponent's pokemon that is pathetic why would you use a move that risky when you can give it other better moves like Ice Beam or Hydro Pump if it can learn it? I I don't really care much about this Pokemon to look at its move set. It can learn TM and HM moves, but its stats don't give it that edge, don't give it that punch. It would help if it actually did give that punch, but it, it just doesn't. It's weak, just like Farfetch'd. A very, barely stronger Pokemon far-fetched and it's ice type so it has more chance of doing like special typing um bonus but it's just worse because i i like far-fetched more it's design wise and originality daddy bird is a penguin with a that's kind of design i guess it was inspired by santa claus i guess yeah that's why it's more of a christmas pokemon yeah again a trophy that you just can't really utilize. You just look at it and go, oh, that's nice. And then you never look at it again because it's so... It's more of like a collectible, really, rather than a Pokemon. I mean, Pokemon, you could train from start to finish. Like, any starter or any of the early bird or normal type Pokemon. But with Deli Bird, nothing. Six. Uh, I don't know whether I'm going to get hate comments for this, but uh, number six is Smeargle. Worse than Daddy Bird, in my opinion, it's a normal type that learns one move, Sketch. It's not like it only learns one move off the bat. Every time you level up to a certain level, Smeargle learns Sketch. Sketch is a good... Actually, I can't say that with a straight face. Uh, sketch is a horrible move. It allows you to permanently copy an opponent's last used move. So if your opponent used on against Smeargle, um, I don't know, a uh, Hydro Pump, and S Smeargle survives, it learns Hydro Pump. But there's no real benefit to that because it doesn't have special typing bonuses. And without that, it's just a lot weaker. Its stats are... It's, I've just, I looked at its attack and special attack, and they're a... a, a horrifyingly bad an average of 20 are you serious how am i supposed to do any damage with a pokemon that has no attack or special attack it's ridiculous that's like shuckle shuckle was gonna be on this list but smeargle just shows an inkling of personality but just not enough not no stat that can knock that make it special shuckle has Godlike defense and special defense. Smeargle doesn't have any stat which is worth going, you know, which. Oh my god, it's awesome, you know? It doesn't have that ability. It doesn't have an ability like that. It doesn't have a move like that. You can't, you can't even teach it TM or HM moves. How am I supposed to create a perfect moveset for a Pokemon where its attack just doesn't allow you to do so? It's random. It's. Awful. That's why it is at number six. 
Now for the top five.